Welcome back to the Piezo Shock Show. We are on episode number 17. And we're going to answer a uh, uh, question uh, from um, one of the viewers. And that is, how does a piezoelectric transformer work? These are quite unique devices because they convert electrical energy to mechanical back to electrical. And they form some type of transformation you know, function for our, uh, our electrical signal. And the transformers, either they convert voltage to a larger value or to a smaller value. Uh, but at the same time, it's really important to understand that energy is not created uh, or uh, actually it's sort of destroyed or, or because due to inefficiencies existing, whether it's a mechan electromechanical or a piezoelectric, um, sorry, electromagnetic or a piezoelectric uh, transformer. But when you convert voltage to be higher, then there, you, you have lower currents. And when you convert voltage to be lower, which is called step down versus step up, uh, in the step down configuration, the voltage is lower, but the aim is also to get current to be higher at times. So let's keep going. That's what a transformer does. It converts an AC uh, electrical signal into a AC electrical signal voltage being higher or lower, and also therefore converting current. So the two types of uh, transformers, uh, obviously the common one being electromagnetic transformers, which are windings around a coil or around a, a magnetic uh, around a magnetic core, um, uh, and that uh, converts you, you know uh, voltage up or down based on the number of windings. If you have more windings on the secondary, you're going to have a, a step up voltage. If you have less windings on the secondary, you're going to have step down. There's a bunch of different um, calculations that can be done in order to optimize such a design, but that's the basic premise. Uh, there's electromagnetic coupling in between the wires and due to magnetic flux and um, how the, the voltage generated across the, the coils and, and the current. Uh, that's all, all how that goes down. But we're here to actually to talk about piezoelectric uh, transformers. And first I'm gonna talk about the differences. Why would one be attractive versus another? What are the basic features of, of one versus another? One really attractive part about piezoelectric transformers is that they are non-magnetic. So for specific uh, medical applications, namely MRI, uh, which have high magnetic fields, it's important to have components uh, which do not create or are not affected by magnetic fields, such as piezoelectric transformers or piezoelectric materials. They're not affected by magnetic fields. They're not, they're electrically driven. They're due to electric fields, electrostatics, not electromagnetics. Uh, the other point about uh, the difference between piezo transformers and electromagnetic transformers is that and you know as you keep shrinking down a electromagnetic transformer what happens to those windings they get thinner and thinner uh, and that what that thin winding causes is um, increase in resistance because as you get a thinner wire you know it's harder for current to flow through the winding so they get a higher resistance so there's an extreme there is a there is a guaranteed inefficiency as you start to decrease the size of your transformer. That's not true for piezoelectric devices. They are they operate the same efficiency whether you have a larger device or a small device. So obviously, when you make when you're going with piezos, you typically are going for smaller. That's where piezoelectric materials are going to conquer electromagnetics. But on the larger scale, when you want to do kilowatts of uh, of, of power transformation, of voltage transformation, um, you're not going to want, and you're not limited by space, you're not going to want to use a piezo. Piezos aren't good for everything, but they're really good for the things they're good at. Also, the differences in piezo is that they're going to depend on the resonant frequency of the device uh, as well. Uh, there's going to be, there perhaps does need some active control of the frequency. Um, they are, they're going to operate in a very specific band, uh, a resonant frequency band of the mechanical structure on upon which the um, voltage conversion is taking place. However, electromagnetics are a bit more wide band. Yes, there's probably a, um, and there's going to be a desirable frequency. However, the, uh, there's you know there's flexibility in which frequency you use um, you know and, and in the case of a, a piezo transformer there's not flexibility at all either you're at the resonance and it's working or if you're even a kilohertz or slightly off then you're completely kind of out of realm in that way so there's more complex um, 
interaction in a piezoelectric transformer that you have to have additional controls for. But again, it does provide very efficient conversion in a small space. Uh, and you know, when we're sh and nowadays, obviously the trend is shrinking down um, all, all things electronics, right? So power supplies are also something that you would like to shrink down the size of converting your wall voltage um, you know, your outlet voltage into something that charges your device, like five volts or nine volts, whatever it is that your, your device gets charged off of. Um, you would like to decrease that size and also decrease the heating that occurs in that. Um, you know, those power bricks can get fairly hot and also they you know that also signifies their inefficiencies so you you'd like to be able to have a smaller transformer as well as produce more uh, be more efficient at a small in, in that smaller um uh configuration uh, also piezo transformers have the downside of being me intrinsically mechanical so they have mechanical failures um, they fracture they can break um, they have other uh, variabilities associated with piezo so they're not it's not a completely 100 uh, percent home run you know you gotta you gotta get a piezo in there as uh, uh, there are issues uh, with piezoelectric it's more complicated but it can it, they are more efficient for uh, small piezo small transform uh, uh, electrical transformer applications all right so let's take a look at the first case so there's two topologies and there may be more there's two topologies of transformers on piezos and they, they do work in reverse just as um, electromagnetic transformers they work in reverse if you you know change the primary to secondary coil uh, you know power the, uh, the a different coil you'll have a, a step up or a step down in voltage um, but also today some popular uh, topologies uh, which are used for both step up and step down um, cases so here we have a step up uh, piezo and we have uh, a re resonance so all of these all these uh, um, um, devices are uh, operate in the resonance mode um, th uh, that, that just increases the efficiency of the of the device however you can make piezo transformers in the sense of increasing or decreasing voltage in like a dc or a static case but you're, that's not going to be to drive power that's just going to be for a straight amplification um, if you have different configurations it's not going to be able to drive power or uh, c convert power but it could amplify a, a slow a slow moving signal uh, if that were, were to be necessary so you you wanted to have an amplifier for a certain voltage um, you may have you know piezos hooked up in different different um, orientations such that you will actually amplify the final voltage uh, input from one and read off another uh, piezo but in this case, we're working for resonant devices that provides the highest level of efficiency, the best energy transfer between the components, uh, thereby increasing efficiency and actually just plain allowing the device to work. So in this case, we have a thickness polarized piezo element and it's bonded to a, you could say a a length polarized piezo element, uh, you know, polarized in the longer direction. So you input voltage here. This causes the device to resonate. And because this is a longer thickness and also it is in the polarization direction, um, it produces more voltage at the output. For this, for a single voltage input, it produces more voltage at the output because an electric field is developed across, you know, due to the resonating behavior. Uh, an electric field is developed across this because of the th larger thickness and also the improved electromechanical uh, coupling on this side due to a thickness response or a length or in the same direction as the polarization, you, you have increased voltage due to um, the resonance effect and the coupling between these two elements. So this is a, a low impedance input. And this is a high impedance input. This, the thickness creates that high impedance and also then um, generates a larger voltage for the same amount of stress. So if this, these two elements have the same axial strain, the lengthwise strain, this side will generate more voltage because it's polarized in the length in the same direction as that um, as that strain. And also it's a longer distance. So the long the length of distance also allows the electric field to accumulate across this area so you know, we're not creating energy out of nowhere but it allows the electric field to accumulate across that larger area versus and obviously if you make this very thin and make this very long it's going to be even more drastic and if you make this a multi-layer this will be even lower impedance 
and this will be the difference in impedances will be even higher if you make this input side a multi-layer. Uh, therefore, you can actually create a very large kilovolts of voltage uh, just based off of a simple uh, topology like this. And obviously, if you use it in reverse, you'll also get the reverse. Um, um, you'll you'll get the reverse uh, change. But typically, you're not changing kilovolts into volts. Um, uh, at least on such a small, necessarily on a small scale, but that's not always true. So now I'll go ahead and I'll share another device which is commonly used for step down transformation, but it can also again be used for step up. I've seen some also work on step up. So this is a ring ring device, and it can also be put in multi a multi layer configuration for increased power. Um, but we have an input in the center. And we have a ring electrode on the outside. That's the output. And the base, the bottom electrode is all uniform. And it is the it is grounded. It is pretty much common between the two. So putting a oh, driving the center drives the resonance of the structure. And a lower voltage than was input is going to accumulate on the outside due to there being lower lower general amount of strain on the external interior. Because in, in resonance, you have larger strain at the nodal point, which is going to be the center. Uh, here and we have lower strain at the outside so by electroding the outsides you're going to actually be receiving a lower voltage um than you then initially uh used so that's actually used in a step down configuration if you just reverse that and you make the input this output and input and the input original input and output you can actually step up voltage by driving the exterior and taking voltage your voltage tap off the interior. You can also implement this in a multi-layer configuration for increased power and to keep the resonant frequency of the structure uh, the same. So my name is Dr. Shikani. You have been watching the 17th episode of the Shock Show on piezoelectric transformers. I want to hear your comments and uh, on this topic and also your questions for uh, this uh, uh, this video and also future videos. Uh, be sure to check out my uh, a consulting website, Ultrasonic Advisors. I'll have a couple links in the description. There's also a link to sign up for receiving these um presentation notes uh, so you can kind of skim through them before uh, jumping into the video and it also can prove as a good reference so you'll get those in your email if you sign up so i look forward to seeing you in episode number 18 take care